Uh, g'day, welcome to another Bush Creek fly tying tutorial. So uh, in this video, what we're tying up is this. This is uh, essentially my one of my uh, variations of a uh, kabari. This one is a, um, well, I call it a hopper kabari. It's it's really targeting um, hoppers for, I suppose, specifically when you're doing kakara, but I mean, I guess you could use it at any sort of point. It's pretty easy to tie, it's relatively straightforward. and. Um, so without further ado, we'll get on into it. So the hook I'm going to use for this is a uh, is a stimulator style hook um, in size 12. Now you could probably do this down to 14. You could probably go up to 10 too if you wanted to. Um, and of course, you could use a straight shank hook if, if that's your uh, preference. I, I like uh, the slight curve in this hook for this particular fly. And um, so, so I like using the stimulator hooks. So uh, the thread for this fly, I'm using some um, some YLI silk, number two four one, which is a, uh, a nice amber colour, um, and uh, and we'll use that throughout. So to catch in a little bit of wax on th on the thread, I should say, just just helps to you know, um, provide a little bit of grip, a little bit of purchase onto the materials. So I'm going to catch on this fly. I'm going to catch it on probably about good three or four millimetres or so back from the eye. Um, and that'll probably be round about where uh, I end up sort of the final hackle position uh, before finishing the fly. Uh, two or three turns or several turns to, to catch that on. So the body for this fly is uh, Semperfly Dirty Bug Yarn. And uh, I use two colours. So the, uh, the gold and olive colour and uh, the uh, Rikophilia colour, uh, the olive green colour. And, um, and basically, uh, cut off a length, four or five inches, I guess. Um, pull it apart so you've got one strand of each because it's uh, it's clearly a, uh, a two strand type of material. And um, so I just pull pull those pieces apart so I have one strand of each color. And uh, and then I'm going to come in and tie those in basically where I want the body to finish, right up close. And then just carry that down, securing that yarn down along the hook shank, um, down into the bend. And I'll probably come about, I don't know, I guess you could say a quarter of the way around the bend, somewhere in about that position. And then uh, bring the thread back up to the start position or thereabouts. And uh, and then what I'm gonna do, a little bit of wax on the thread just to keep it waxed up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a half hitch in here just to help secure the thread and stop it bouncing around while I up the body. So once I've got that yarn secured in, I'm going to come in with a clip. Now I've got a, an old bobbin thing with a, with a press clip on it, nice and tight. Um, you can do it with your fingers. But uh, basically I'm going to catch that yarn in at the back of the thread and then spin it clockwise and I'm going to tighten up this thread. Now I want it firm. I don't want it super tight, but I do want it firm because I want to create a bit of a, uh, a, a um, texture to the body as opposed to just being full of yarn. So I've got it reasonably firm and then I'm going, just going to come through and basically wrap that yarn all the way up back to the thread. And uh, I'm just going to control the tension on the yarn. If I feel it's a little bit too tight, I'm just going to back it off. If it starts to get a little bit loose because of my turns, I'll, uh, I'll just put a little bit more pressure into it. And, and tension up that uh, twist again, bringing those two colors together. And so what I'm doing here is, is twofold. I'm, I'm providing this model color, which you know sort of is indicative of, of um, a lot of hoppers. And, uh, and then it's also providing you know, a little bit of segmentation. And thirdly, I guess you could say, is that by twisting these materials together, I uh, actually provide a little bit of um, structure to the to the body and um, hopefully it doesn't sort of all pull apart in the first trout. So once I'm back to the thread, I'm going to come out across and do two fairly firm turns with the silk. And I'm going to keep the pressure on the silk with my left hand and just release those fibres. Now I want them to sort of unfold a bit for the final few securing wraps so that they start to flatten down onto the body. Uh, onto the shank, I should say. So once I've got to this point, I'm just going to come in with my scissors and trim away the waist piece on a bit of a taper so I can start to build 
we'll give it a type of point here. Secure that down and I'm going to come back up. Touching terms, back to the base of the body itself. A little wax on the thread. So the next piece I'm going to tie in is some emu plume. Uh, sorry, I should say ostrich. Emu, it's a big thing for emu. Uh, some ostrich plumes. So I've got two plumes here and they're the, the sort of dirty gray color for, towards the base of, a, base of a sort of a natural black plume. Um, of course, you could, you know, I guess you could use sort of any color you like, but uh, we're using those. Just going to trim up the ends and even those up. And then I'm just going to catch the tip of those in with uh, one, two turns, just to sort of secure them in place. The hackle is clearly a golden pheasant tippet hackle. Um, so you want a small one and you want one where the, the longest tip is sort of about the body length, shank length. Uh, you really don't want it much more than that. And ideally, if you can get it smaller, you probably really want it only about the length of the body. So it's probably a touch too long, but, but it'll be fine. Um, it's a bit hard to get some. So I'll just uh, tease those away, cleared away, obviously, the, um, the sort of poorer material towards the butt of the stem, uh, captured the tip, and then I've just orientated all those fibers back on the hackle pliers. So I'm just going to come in um, and catch that in at the tip with uh, two or three turns to secure it. And then I'm going to trim away this you could do this first, but I find sometimes uh, it's a bit easier to capture the golden fence at tippet um, when it's got a little bit of a longer point on it. Okay, so now I've got the tippet tied in, coming with my hackle pliers, capture the butt, and then I'm just going to draw these fibers back and up away from the hook, and, and then essentially hackle the fly right where I've tied it in. Just to be a little bit of pain. Uh, you just sort of get your fingers involved and a good turn. Now, if they go sort of everywhere like this, which I have a tendency to do, that doesn't matter. You can still sort of capture them at a later point and pull them all back. And with the Kabari, it's probably almost preferred anyway, I guess. So now I've got the tippet tied in, I've used all that material. Just come in with a couple of turns to secure it. And then so I can get some of these fibers to come back again. And I'm just going to come down and I'm going to use that stem to help build up some mass into the head of the fly. Come down a little bit shy of the hook eye, trim away that stem. Finish securing it down, and then I'm just going to come back up. I'm going to come back up right up hard against that tippet and really sort of encourage it to sort of come up right. Wax on the thread. So from here, we're going to uh, wrap in this ostrich. So the first two, a turn or two, I'm going to do behind the tippet. So I'm just going to bring all these tippet fibers back and then just a slight twist in those stems just to hold them together so they don't sort of want a tendency to wander apart. I'm just going to do a turn, come around for the second. Now on the second, what I'm looking for is a nice sort of segue gap between these tippet fibers where I can bring the ostrich hurl to the front using my left hand to capture those tippet fibers back. And then I'm just going to build up essentially a thorax space using the ostrich stray tippet fiber there. A couple of turns. Oops, no, I mean we've lost it. Right. Try this again. So one. Probably two turns maybe. We could probably push for three, but uh, we'll stick with two. And I'll just come up with my silk and capture the tip of that ostrich. Two or three turns. From here, come with the scissors, trim away the, uh, the tip of that ostrich, and then maybe if you need to, it's not essential, but just for aesthetics, I guess, you can come in and just tidy up 
some of these longer in you, uh, sorry, uh, ostrich plume fibers that have sort of gone forward. And then I'm just going to come down to the eye and start to build up the head area. Now I'm using wax here because I'm not going to varnish this and, uh, and the wax not only colors up the thread, but it actually protects the thread, gives me a nice bit of purchase as well. So I don't want to do, I don't want to build a too, too big a head area, but uh, you want something that's reasonably pronounced. And then from here, I'm going to do a couple of sets of whip finish. So two or three turns of whip finish in here, and lock it off. Now, the reason I do two or three turns is because I wax the thread, uh, it bites pretty well. Um, so if you try and do too many turns, you'll end up um, sort of have a risk of breaking your thread. And then um, from here, I'm just going to do another couple of turns, two or three turns behind another set of whip finish, just to really secure that head. And that's that. Come in my scissors, trim away that thread, and then from here I can just reorientate this tippet material. Um, just make sure it's all sort of sit and pronounced. And that's it. So that's uh, a hopper kabari. Um, I'm not too sure whether you'd call that jun as in a normal orientation of the hackle because that's pretty much how tip it will form or whether it's a futsu but it's probably closer to a jun but anyway but some um, let's call it a hopper kabari and leave it at that anyway that's it thanks for watching if uh, if you try this out and it works for you let me know how it goes otherwise tight lines